Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. We've got a lot of situations escalating at an alarming pace. I'm going to try to briefly go over what's going on with Russia, China, North Korea, and Israel. We'll start with Russia. After the strikes in Sevastopol and the loss of Russian civilians in Crimea and Dagestan, Ukraine also hit the valuable NIP-16 Space Monitoring and Communication Center near the city of Yapatoria on the Black Sea coast. It is a Soviet facility that was placed under the command of the Russian Aerospace Defense Forces for nuclear early warning and command operations after Russia's unification with Crimea. As can be seen, Kiev is now systematically hitting Russian targets of strategic importance. Moscow can no longer fail to take action. The NIP-16 facility includes two sites located 10 kilometers apart, the receiving station at Site 1 near the village of Vitino, and a transmitting station at Site 2 near the village of Yutuno. Like all other Soviet ground stations, NIP-16 was staffed with Soviet Army officers, the military unit, had the official designation of VCH-34346. With the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia lost control of the space communication station, leaving the tracking network partially blind. The partial blindness expanded as the Soviet fleet of supplementary surveillance networks languished in the chaotic 1990s. Without them, Russia could only communicate with the spacecraft as they passed over Russian territory. The only other option was for NASA to integrate them into the U.S.'s extensive surveillance and communication satellite network, which of course was not possible. But the Union with Crimea gave Russia an opportunity to boost its ability to communicate with its spacecraft and military satellites. The Ukrainian army released video of the launch of eight MGM-140 Attackums missiles. Next up, we'll discuss the escalating situation with China and remarks made by Scott Ritter at a recent emergency press conference. A warning to Southeast Asian nations, and especially the Philippines, that the U.S. is looking for the next Ukraine close to its soil, said Scott Ritter, the U.S. military expert and retired U.S. Marine Corps intelligence officer. This time, the U.S. is wanting for a long time to use states like Taiwan or the Philippines is aiming for a conflict with China by proxies in exactly the same way they are conducting a Ukraine war, effectively hitting the Russians. The American former U.S. Armed Forces officer was blunt on the issue. The United States is incapable of fighting a sustained conflict against a peer-level force. The United States cannot fight and engage China and win. We will not beat the Chinese. We cannot beat the Chinese. And we know this, and yet we're using the Philippines to create the conditions of potential conflict with the Chinese. Please understand that for the Filipino people, this is a recipe for disaster. You think America is your friend. So too did the Ukrainian people. And they are dying by the hundreds of thousands. Friends don't let friends die in those quantities. The Ukrainians have been displaced by the tens of millions. Friends don't let friends have their cities destroyed in this manner. Friends don't let friends have families separated, have mothers and children uh, destined to a life of refugee status in perpetual poverty. That's not how friends behave. America has never been the friend of the Ukrainians, and we are not the friends of the Filipinos. We don't like you. If we did like you, we wouldn't be doing this to you. We are using you. You are a tool, nothing but a tool. And when the tool ceases to be useful, we will discard you. And discard you means usually after a war that devastates you. We are using you to gain some sort of momentary leverage over the Chinese. We will fail. The Chinese will win and you will be destroyed. End of story. It's high time 
the Filipino people pressure their government to start sitting down and engaging the Chinese government responsibly. China is not your enemy. China is your neighbor. China is your friend. China doesn't want war. And if you would engage China in diplomacy, and as we've all indicated here, America has long since lost the skill set necessary to carry out diplomacy, but the Filipinos, the Philippine people can reignite this, to relearn it, to use this skill to prevent a war. But if you continue to behave as colonial subjects, and I know that's a sore, sore, sore subject in the Filipinos, because you were the colonial subjects of America. We still view you as our colonial subjects. We don't like you. We don't care about you. We just want to use you. Grow up. Grow up and act responsibly. Take control of your own future. America is not here to help you. America is here only to use you until there's nothing left, and then we will discard you on the trash heap of history. Now, on to the ongoing situation with North Korea. Satellite images reveal that North Korea has begun construction of a wall at various points near its border with South Korea. The leaked footage analyzed by BBC Verify shows that an area within the demilitarized zone has been cleared which could be a breach of the agreement between North and South Korea. Specifically, according to a BBC report, North Korea's recent activity is unusual according to experts and comes at a time of rising tensions between the two countries. The only assumption that could be made here is that Pyongyang is seeking to strengthen its military presence and fortifications along the border with South Korea. It is noted that the DMZ is a 4 kilometer wide dead zone between North and South Korea, which are still at war, having never signed a peace treaty. The DMZ is split in two, with each side controlled by the respective nations. BBC Verify analyzed high-resolution satellite images of a 7-kilometer stretch of the border to see what changes North Korea is making in the area. These images appear to show at least three sections where barriers have been erected near the DMZ, covering a total of about 1 kilometer near the eastern edge of the border. It is possible that further barriers have been built in other parts of the border. The exact start date of the construction is unclear due to a lack of previous high-resolution images of the area. However, these structures were not visible in an image taken in November 2023. The latest satellite images of the eastern edge of the border shows what appears to be a newly created access road. To draw the exact northern limit of the DMZ on the map above, we adopted the BBC's border mapping survey. This is due to the fact that there are slight variations in available border maps. However, all versions identified show land clearing taking place with the DMZ. An official of South Korea's Army General Staff said in a recent news conference that the military has detected ongoing activity related to the reinforcing tactical roads, laying mines, and clearing debris. The clearing of the land could be for both military and non-military aspects, says Professor Kil Juban, a professor of the International Security at Korea University. It allows for the easy creation of observatories, he says, for North Korea to monitor military activities in South Korea and to detect defectors attempting to cross the border into South Korea. We need to keep a close eye on this situation. I'll let you know if there's anything that uh, pops up in the future. Lastly, we will discuss the latest from Israel. The developments in the Middle East seem to be stormy, with the situation worsening day by day. Things are on a tightrope as Israel and Hezbollah are locked in a protracted conflict with Israel talking of an imminent invasion of Lebanon in the coming days if Nasrallah is not removed. Against the background of the developments, Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has made an emergency trip to the U.S. in order to meet with top officials of the Biden administration to discuss the developments on the twin fronts in Gaza and Lebanon. In particular, Gallant, accompanied by the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Israeli Armed Forces, will meet with Lloyd Austin, Minister of Defense, Antony Blinken, Minister of Foreign Affairs, as well as Joe Biden's Special Envoy, Amos Hashtang, born in Israel, who recently visited Israel, but also Lebanon, as we mentioned in a related article recently. 
The meeting is expected to take place in a tense atmosphere as Israel brings back to the force for the issue of reduced arms shipments from the U.S., an issue that has caused discomfort in the U.S., describing it as complicated. Gallant delivers Netanyahu's ultimatums, which are as follows, <clears throat> according to the Israeli website N12 or N12. If Nasrallah is not removed, then Israel will be forced to act in Lebanon immediately. Armed shipments to Israel from the U.S. must resume at an un unimpeded pace. A war against Hezbollah should have specific objective objectives. Israel cannot repeat a broad ground invasion in Lebanon as in Gaza. The operations in Lebanon will use weapons and weapons systems that have never been used before this statement is not a threat from the Netanyahu government, but is part of the limited operations inside Lebanon, in which Israel believes that if the state-of-the-art weapon systems are used, then Israel's ANSK will be established more easily. We repeat, according to the lessons of the 2006 war during the Second Lebanon War, this may not be the case. Israel lends legitimacy to such an operation, uh, legitimacy, legitimacy which, according to Netanyahu, will be ensured through diplomatic campaign organized by the U.S. Again, the U.S. cannot guarantee uh, this, will, <clears throat> this with countries such as Russia and China to be on the other side and fighting for the opposite, not to mention the recent arrest warrants for Netanyahu and Hamas by the International Criminal Court in The Hague. The aforementioned diplomatic coalition will also be military, since it will provide an umbrella of anti-ballistic protection over Israel, orchestrated with the country's anti-ballistic shield, or the Iron Dome, David's Sling, and the Arrow 3. Israel will not under any circumstances accept the Biden administration's cessation of operations in Rafah as a condition for providing aid to Lebanon. No pending the uh, transition to Phase C, which will return the hostages dead or alive and further weaken Hamas. In response, Nasrallah has sent the message of strength and self-sufficiency in the same tone as Iran's statements that Hezbollah can defend itself. We told them, says Nasrallah, thank you, but we are already overwhelmed by the numbers we have, referring to the hordes of fighters willing to send Iraq, Iran, <clears throat> Syria, and Yemen to fight alongside Hezbollah. Additionally, and according to statements to The Guardian by an official of the organization linked to Hezbollah and Iran, who remained anonymous, fighters from the Afghanistan and Pakistan brigades are also said to be fighting in Lebanon. Nevertheless, the U.S. continues to live with the fear that Iran might get involved in a possible war in Lebanon. Hezbollah is more capable in terms of capabilities, number of missiles, etc. than Hamas, and I would say that I see Iran willing to provide more support to Hezbollah, said U.S. Air Force General Charles Q. Brown. The organization, however, on Saturday, in a show of strength, both in terms of intelligence and technical capabilities, released a video marking key Israeli military positions along with coordinates. Here is the video from Hezbollah. <laughs> يفكر في الحرب معنا سيندم إن شاء الله Well, there you have it. That is all for now. I'll continue to monitor these situations and let you know of any substantial changes. I appreciate you watching and hope to see you soon. Shalom.